What is going on YouTube? Welcome to the show. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about a specific technology and why I feel this piece of tech is significant. When we talk about CPU and GPU, we often talk about how fast it is, the number of cores it has. For GPU, we talk about the amount of stream processors or the amount of CUDA cores, and you know, and definitely the amount of VRAM is going to have. Not much is talked about the other technology that's in it that makes the other component work well. I want to focus this video on AMD's uh, Infinity Fabric technology. It's often talked about but never really appreciated and why I think it's a very important piece of technology that will help AMD deal with a certain change in the near future. So what is Infinity Fabric? Infinity Fabric is AMD's technology that will allow for fast communication uh, between CPUs. In basic terms, it's an interconnect that acts as a communication bridge between cores inside a multi-core CPU. Imagine you have an 8-core CPU, each one doing its own processing. Let's say that core 1 needs information from core 7. The information is held in core 7, is transferred to core 1. So when you run a core intensive application, this happens at near light speed. If the information doesn't get there in time, then the CPU stalls. Uh, we experience this as a stutter or a freeze uh, on our computer. Now you can imagine all this happens at blazing fast speeds where all 8 cores are exchanging data seamlessly with very little to no latency issues at all. It doesn't have to be between CPU cores, it can be between different uh, GPUs or integrated circuits. To really uh, picture it in our heads, imagine Infinity Fabric as a sheet of cloth stretched flat out. Now take a, a CPU, a GPU, and some other IC and place it on the sheet. It doesn't matter where as long as the pins uh, grab onto the cloth. In a nutshell, that's how I see Infinity uh, Fabric, or that's how I imagine Infinity Fabric. Others use the analogy of a Lego base by which all other Lego piece fits onto this base. Now if you're more uh, of a, uh, you know, a CET or an EET engineer, so maybe uh, imagine that um, this thing is a breadboard where all the pins instead of of it connecting horizontally but instead can you know each pin underneath that breadboard can communicate with each, uh, with each other so this is infinity fabric it's intelligent it's efficient and highly scalable before infinity fabric there was front side bus or FSB and hyper transport uh, you guys remember that AMD's hyper transport on the Athlon processor line uh, versus the Intel S FSB. Infinity Fabric is the true successor to Hypertransport. So what does the competition have that is an equivalent to uh, Infinity Fabric? Well, Intel have Quick Path Interconnect and NVIDIA have something called NVLink. While all three are some sort uh, of you know, interconnects, not all are equal. Uh, Intel's Quick Path Interconnect provides uh, high-speed transport of data between the CPU, the cache, and the integrated GPU. So, you know, its theoretical speed caps at 25.6 uh, gigabits per second. On NVIDIA side, they have what's called NVLink. This interconnect, though, is really uh, a link between GPUs and GPU and CPU. So, in a case like, say, SLI, you have a, a three-way SLI, you have three GPUs, so that NVLink is between uh, GPU1, GPU2, and GPU3, and also a link to the CPU, so all that information is, you know, processed quickly, and, you know, it's 10 times faster than, say, PCI Express 3.0 interconnect. Uh, one lane of NVLink is 25 gigabits per second, or one direction. So this technology is best used for, say, in the instance of, uh, say, a 10 uh, GPU rack, server rack, where you have say 10 P1, uh, P100s, uh, so that NVLink is between each individual P100s allowing for a, you know, a quick um, communication between those GPUs, and so that's how what NVLink is. Uh, different, same concept, but different in terms of what Infinity Fabric is. Infinity Fabric is baked onto every AMD uh, CPU and GPU going forward. It has a 256-bit wide bus with speed that is scalable up to the speed of memory. Think about that. This is why, or this is the very reason why Ryzen CPU sees a tremendous uh, bump in performance when compared with, say, slower speed RAM in the same system. 
Here are some benchmarks from a YouTuber uh, channel, Mind Blank Tech. You can see from the benchmark that most of them, uh, most of the time, it beats the i7 7700K just by having uh, 3600 megahertz RAM. Infinity Fabric is highly scalable. We just saw that as memory speed gets faster, so will the bus speed of the Infinity Fabric. AMD knows that it's created something special. That's why it's putting Infinity Fabric onto everything that it's uh, making going forward. We see it in Ryzen, uh, Threadripper, Epic, and even Vega. This is a great piece of technology, but not many people understand how far reaching it is. Do you guys remember uh, Moore's Law? It states that transistor will double every 18 months. So far, this prediction has held true, but we're getting to a point where we're beginning to see that shrinking the die size, but also packing twice as much transistors is getting difficult. And at some point, all the chip makers will hit a wall in this. Here is a Michio Kaku, a physicist, talking about this. In 10 years times or so, we will see the collapse of Moore's Law. In fact, already, already we see a slowdown of Moore's Law. Computer power simply cannot maintain its rapid exponential rise using standard silicon technology. Intel Corporation had, has admitted this. The industry as a whole knows this, so how does Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD deal with this? By going with what's called a MCM or multi-chip module design. It means that we will see two or more chips built onto one module. It's a way for these companies to maintain the performance increase that we expect from them until uh, their technology is there to continue Moore's Law. As you can see from Threadripper, the CPU module here, it's huge. It's very big. But underneath that, uh, you know, that lid holds a two uh, multi-core CPU. Epic is another MCM design. What about GPU? Well, Moore's Law doesn't discriminate. Even GPU will be affected. NVIDIA is talking about MCM uh, for their future GTX GPU. Now that AMD has Infinity Fabric, doing a multi-chip module Vega or Navi is a real possibility. Imagine in a few years, we might see a single slot Radeon GPU with two Navi core MCMs, both working on one GPU module, basically doubling the stream processor, the compute units, and doubling the performance near 100% efficiencies from both of these GPU cores. That's pretty crazy. Do you remember the uh, Radeon R9 295X2? Uh, this is uh, AMD's um, two or dual GPU on a single PCB. If you're wondering, this is not an MCA, uh, MCM design, but like I said, it's just two GPUs built on a single PCB. Infinity Fabric is AMD's solution. NVIDIA will have their own solution. So far, AMD is sitting uh, well with Infinity Fabric. They're quite pleased with the result. I can't wait to see what AMD do next uh, with Infinity Fabric. Hypertransport is an open source project, so who knows? The others might just adopt it as well. So what do you guys think of Infinity Fabric? Does my explanation clear up some mystery surrounding this cool piece of technology? Uh, if I missed something or if I got something wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, I hope you, uh, you guys like this video, and if so, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe. And also, I want to let you guys know that my work schedule has picked up a bit, so... Uh, my numbers of video that I put out a month uh, or a week is going to decrease a bit. Uh, of course, I'll try to give you breaking news on AMD and NVIDIA and other technologies that I think you know are important. And so I'll break those in uh, for you guys. Um, you know, so far my channel has been doing a lot of AMD, but that's because AMD has new products to launch, and so they are getting a lot of the uh, news coverage over it. But thank you for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye bye.